Hello everybody, this is Lisa from the Ewing Branch Library and I thought I would create a video for you to enjoy uh, taking you on a virtual tour of my garden. Kind of um, bringing the outdoors in indoors for you to enjoy. Before I start, I just want to explain that I primarily use perennials and shrubs in my garden. I do love annuals, how they look um, every year. They're so bright and colorful, but I don't like the fact that I have to plant them every year and, um, and dig up my garden. So I just tend to use perennials, things that come up every year. And I like having kind of a crazy wild look to it. Here we have an oak leaf hydrangea. I should also mention I planted most of these things five years ago when I moved into the house. I dug up everything that was here, which um, basically involved just a few ugly bushes. And I got rid of all of that and just designed my garden the way I wanted it to look. Um, my vision was to have a cottage garden, like an English cottage garden, just crazy wild, all different colors and textures and heights and nothing too planned and orderly. And you'll see that when I take you on this tour. So this is on the left side of my house in the front. This is an oak leaf hydrangea, and it's called that because the leaves resemble oak leaves. And in the, as you can see, they look just like what you would find on an oak tree. And in the fall, they turn a orangey, rust brown color like this. This is left over from last year. So the whole thing is covered with these beautiful leaves after the flowers are dried. Um, so it has really um, a lot of um, interest year-round. One of my favorites and again I um, sometimes cut the flowers and dry them because the hydrangeas are huge and they just make beautiful cut flowers. They're not the round um, like pom-pom hydrangeas, they're more elongated. Down here we have, honestly I don't know if it's cat mint or spearmint but it tends to overtake the garden. I think it is considered somewhat of a weed, but um, it's a pretty weed and it smells nice and it takes up a lot of room here. Um, and it, um, it fills up space that otherwise would just be kind of barren and um, it just spreads out a lot and covers up all the mulch. This, honestly, again, I don't know what that is. That's why I like planting perennials because each year when they come up, I'm surprised at what they are because I tend to not remember, unless I look at a picture, um, what, I, what is in my garden. And things tend to spread out a lot too. Here, down here, we have the beginnings of um, cone flowers, also known as echinacea. And it's a, an herbaceous flower that um, a lot of people use for their healing, its healing properties. They have um, echinacea supplements. Some more cat mint or spearmint. Over here is another type of hydrangea. You can see here the little buds, the green buds starting to come out. This will be a while until you see flowers on it. And here too. This is called a caryopteris. This is really pretty because um, when everything else is kind of going by the wayside in the late fall, this, or even early fall, this blooms with beautiful purple aromatic flowers. And, you know, it's, it adds something to the garden when it starts getting cold and dreary outside. Over here we have hollyhock. And hollyhock, um, you, you'll find them a lot um, in this part of the country. A lot of times you'll see them in farms and meadows. They get very, very tall. The flowers are pink and purple on this one. And um, they tend to just self-seed. So I have one over here that I didn't ever plant, but you can see it's beginning to, it's hard to see with the sun. but. Um, that's going to be one as well and they just get very very tall but they're beautiful that's a hollyhock another caryopteris 
this is, as you can see, these are all that uh, hollyhock and they're just coming up. This is a coral bell and um, the foliage on this is beautiful and then eventually there um, will be some spikes of flowers that resemble bells. That's why they're called coral bells. Another caryopteris, as you can see, that's a staple in my garden because it's easy to take care of. It's, it comes back all the time and the, the purple flowers are just beautiful. Here's Mr. Pig on my front stoop wearing a purple bow because purple is my favorite color. I love purple and green together. Now we have our lilacs. And I have three lilac bushes where, again, they, these were all planted in 2015 and they've just, just exceeded my expectations in terms of their size and their beauty. They're starting to pop here with some flowers. Pretty soon they'll be light purple all over this bush. And I cut those as well and bring them inside for their aroma. You can see they're just all over the place. It's hard to see with the sun in my eyes, but I'm glad it's sunny. And over here, you can see that one. That's really tall. Okay, another caryopteris. <laughs> and down here, caryopteris. As well as another hollyhock. And I think over here at some, well, we have definitely have over here some more echinacea. Um, and also over here, I did plant um, butterfly weed, not the butterfly bush, but butterfly weed, which is better for butterflies. And here actually is a stem, I believe, of a hollyhock from last year. So you can see how tall it gets. Here is some yarrow. Yarrow, again, is a wildflower that you'll see all over here um, in this part of the country. Great dried flowers. Uh, mine are pink. You'll, most of them that I've seen elsewhere are yellow, but mine are light pink, which, which are very pretty. These tend to overtake my garden as well. Some more hollyhock, which are pretty, pretty big. The leaves get very big on those. Here's another coral bell. Together, foliage is just pretty, and this one is more purpley brown than the other one I showed you, which was more um, green. Some more yarrow. Try to get out of the sun here. Some more yarrow. This this grows pretty rapidly too. Another coral bell back there. This I won't know what it is until it surprises me and reveals itself. <laughs> another lilac. Coral bell, caryopteris. Down here, I believe that might be some echinacea. Back here, I have something called bleeding heart, and it's called this because the um, the flowers look like hearts. And these get very; these are really pretty. And that's good for a shade garden. Not that this is really shady, but it's, I planted that um, in a somewhat shady spot. It doesn't get as much sun as the rest of the garden. This one is a Montauk daisy. You'll see these, uh, these are those big white um, petal flowers with the yellow centers. And you see those up and down the um, Eastern seaboard. Those flowers don't tend to bloom until until uh, late summer, early fall. This is a nine bark, it's called. Um, this is a really big shrub. I think there, there are two of them here, maybe even three. And as you can see, this is starting to bloom. Um, really, really nice uh, foliage, kind of like a purpley brown. And then again, in late summer, um, it blossoms with these really, really pretty white flowers. So that's called nine bark. Here's another hydrangea. The other thing I like to do is um, add little ornaments in my garden. I have a owl there, this gazing ball there. I have a bird bath. There's a little hand.
can. It just adds some um, whimsy to the garden. Okay, this is a peony. Now, the flower should be blooming in the next few weeks. It's a beautiful, beautiful, huge pink flower. And honestly, I don't remember planting this, and I don't think I did, because I don't think I would have planted it right near this nine bark. It probably, um, maybe a bird carried a seed and dropped it here, and that's how it's growing, because again, I never planted that. I would never think of a peony, but it's really pretty, actually. Um, this is a, another hydrangea back there. Um, and back there, you can just see the very tops of it. That's um, another hydrangea, and that's gotten really, really big over the last few years. And again, I dry those flowers because they're just beautiful. And that is, serves as a nice, um, a nice privacy screen. Not that I don't love my neighbors, but it's nice to have some privacy. And that's what this all does when it's in full bloom. It really just, you don't see, you know, other people's siding and their fences. Okay, oh, and here's some astilbe. Um, just another perennial that has beautiful plume-like flowers. And those are pink as well. My bird bath, which I have to clean. And as you'll see here, there's a lot of um, English ivy which is not really the greatest thing to have in a garden because it tends to be invasive and suck the life out of other plants. But it's coming over from my neighbor's garden and I do, um, I do rip a lot of it out because it just, it's too much. Except it's nice to have some kind of ground cover other than, you know, dead leaves. <laughs> so that's English ivy and I do make note of it around my cherry trees. You can see here it's starting to get close so I just rip it out because it can choke trees and actually just kill them eventually. It's not good for trees. Pulls them out. I'll get to my cherry tree in a minute. And here's some Pachysandra, which is nice ground cover too. You just have to plant a couple and they just, you know, just uh, fill up the whole space. The beginnings of some hosta, which are everywhere. They're great for the shade. They're great ground cover. Here's some more hosta coming up. That's variegated. And over here is just, it's gonna just be plain green. And those have beautiful flowers too. Um, towards the middle of summer, um, beautiful um, on long stalks. And they're usually white with a little tinge of purple. Some more right here. I think these are, that was, that was like one of the leaves that one of the stalks with the flower on it that I just never cut back as you can see here is some more hosta here's a dandelion that I pulled out by its roots that's what you should always do and you can see here's this the um that vine but that's okay for now with the English I should say the English ivy some more hostas they seem to just grow anywhere Eventually, I'll put some coleus in there when I can get to the garden center. I had it in there last year, and it really adds some color to this otherwise somewhat, not drab, but it's just very, um, I think it's kind of boring with all just this green foliage. So I put some nice color in there. Um, coleus is an annual. Like I said, I don't plant them really in my garden except on the rare occasion. Uh, beautiful colors. Um, so it adds some nice color and texture to this part of my garden. Over here we have hellebores. I think I'm saying that correctly. This is also known as a Lenten rose. It's not even in the rose family, but it's called that because it tends to bloom around Lent. Okay, another one. Another nine bark again, just to keep some type of uh, screen between the neighbors and myself and this is the weeping cherry that's been on this property probably well, i don't know if since the house was built because my house is about 50 well, was built in the 50s so i don't think it's that old but who knows it's been here a long time and as you can see this is ready to pop all these buds they're just gonna burst any day now this is one of 
it, this actually drew me to this house because every there was the garden was so drab before I did I redid the whole garden but this cherry tree was beautiful when I looked at the house it was, it was I guess a week no when it was couldn't have been March well it was just in full bloom and it was just beautiful it must have been April so this is gonna gonna really bloom any day now this is the garden over here this is my eastern red bud which is a few years old eastern red buds again are just native to this country beautiful arching branches the pink pink little flowers all over it when it blossoms and it has um, this is called I forget the name of it but it does have heart I don't know if it's called a heart shaped eastern red bud but the leaves are heart shaped and just beautiful I think it's called ace of spades now I've I think it's really, uh, it just has heart shaped leaves, which are beautiful. And here is the a crepe myrtle, which I put in here a few years, actually in 2015 it was planted. And then 2018, I believe it was, or 2017, we had a terrible blizzard, got so cold. And since these do really much better, a little uh, further south, it didn't survive that well. Um, the big branches, I had a cut back and then it was growing from the base so it's it does grow but it's just not as big as it once was but it still has these beautiful dark pink flowers on it and that'll that doesn't really bloom until the until late summer because it needs to get a lot of um, heat and sun so I hope you enjoy this virtual tour and I hope to see you in person soon and answer any questions you might have and maybe recommend some books Thank you so much. Bye.